Good morning, good afternoon, good evening from anywhere you're watching this video. My name is Abiyo Shitu from Pro Tribe Community. Here in this video, I'm going to be running you through how to install the GGC compiler on your Windows operating system. So the first thing I will need you, we're actually going to be installing two tools. So the first tool I will need you to install is Git Bash. Okay. I will show you, I will tell you the reason why we need to install Git Bash in a minute, right after we install it. So Git Bash is uh, an environment that allows you to operate, that allows you to enter the Linux commands on your Windows operating system. You can read more on the Git Bash, just go to the official website of Git. This is it here, and you can read on the documentation of it. So I already have it installed. Um, downloaded already, so I'm just going to walk you through the installation process. What you just have to do is to open it up, and um, it's going to request you for a permission to install. Just accept, allow the permission. Now you have just follow the default installation. Next, click on next. Uh, okay, I have it installed before. I had to delete it just to make this video. So I'm just going to override what I have there before. So now I need you to, to click additional icon so you won't be looking for where Git Bash is. Just add an icon to your desktop. Click on X, next, next. Just use the default. It comes with Vim, which is a text editor. Next. Now, yeah, adjusting the name of the initial branch. Okay. You can let Git to decide, but the decision that the Git will give you is just to use a what a default name called master. But there is a new name involved now. There is a new, there are new names involved, which is the word the main. So I would like to override this and what set main as what as the what initial name of my what as the name of my initial branch, okay, which is my default branch. They also call it the root branch. So whether it is main or it is master, it still means the same thing. Master is the old name, while main is the new, newly um um <clears throat> is a new name given to what. To the default branch so we just click on next use the default for the many ones you don't need to worry about what all these ones are doing so yeah i'm just going to where configuring the line um ending conversions i'll just check out this uh, unit style um unit of style line um endings because i'm going to be what's um interacting with the unix system that's the linux operating system so just click on next 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 and then um, install so this is going to take a couple of minutes just um, so about no minutes seconds just for it to run the installation and go extra the files and install it on the system for it to be able to pull it up so we have it um successfully it has successfully installed as you can see the icon on on my desktop because i selected it to add an additional icon on my desktop here so you can just on select this view release note, you don't need to read that. Then just click on this to launch it after you click on finish. So it's going to open up the Git Bash for you. Yours might be looking different. This is an initial settings that I actually, I actually compared it to, to make it look like this. I'm sure once you open yours, it might not be looking like this, but all the same, you can just go to preference, just go to options there, and then style it the way you want it. So I'm not going to bore you with all of that. So now all we just want to install this guy GC compiler. So I'm just going to run GC dash dash version just to be sure that what I don't have GC installed yet. So you can see the GC command I found. Now I told you that why do we need this git bash? Why do we need this git bash? Okay, we can as well when we have our command prompt, which is also a terminal for this is a terminal for the Windows operating system that comes by default on the Windows operating system. So now, but on this terminal. Uh, sorry about that. Okay, but on this terminal, on this uh, command prompt, we are limited to the kind of command scale we can run on it because this is a Windows operating system. I want to be using commands for what for the Linux operating system. Okay, now on this your command prompt, there are some commands that can actually run. Okay, like now, if I should try to list the contents of this directory for now. It's not going to work. LS is not recognized. But on my git bash, I type LS and it's going to list out the what the content of what of where I have of the current working directory that I have presently. You can see LS is not recognized there. 
But if I try to navigate into a directory, let me just say I have a directory called document. For instance, you can see it's navigated here. You can see the CD command worked, but the LS command didn't work. So this is the reason why you need to git bash in order for you to interact to use the Linux command on your what on your Windows operating system. Okay, that said, so I'm going to close this. Just leave the git bash opened. Sorry. All right. So now. Like I said before, we want to install this GCC compiler, okay, which enables us to compile any C program. All right, so I will need you to install another tool, which is called MSS, MSYS2, okay, which is a tool that enables you to install and run any native Windows software. And the software we want to install is the GCC compiler, okay. This is the tool that will enable us to install our GCC compiler on our, on our Windows operating system. All right, so I'm going to drop the link to this um to this um where you can download this tool in the in the um description below. All right, so we are just going to click on next. Just as a default, don't worry about that. Don't worry about renaming anything. We'll click on next, and it's going to run. Just take a few seconds for it to run and install. Okay, so. It has completed the installation and the setup, the installation setup. So all you just have to do is to finish it. Leave it to run the what the MS is going to open up a terminal whereby you can what where you can what down you can install any what any tool that you want, like the GC compiler that we want to install. Okay, once I click on finish, it's going to open up what this what environment for me. So let me just enlarge this. No, okay. So this is just like a terminal, just like our what our git bash, but this is a what uh, that's the the MSYS2 environment where we can what install what our GC compiler. So I'm going to drop what this command for you in the code description. So this is the command line that you need to what to install what the GC compiler on your what on your Windows operating system. Okay, don't worry about what I'm typing. I'm going to drop this in the what in this good description for you. Now you need what internet connection to actually what install run this what you can see the total download side is this and this is the total installation. We are just downloading it. Alright, so just type Y for yes and then proceed. So depending on your what internet connection is going is just going to take a few minutes for this to what to install successfully on your what on your desktop then will continue. So after it has finished your downloading and installing the what, the necessary packages, now we need to install some two chains. Okay, so I'm just going to place the command line. So this command line is going to help us to ins install the necessary what two chain needed for what, for the GC compiler. So this is going to take a little while depending on your internet connection as well. And uh, enter, we just press enter to what to use the default for all. Then press Y for what for yes, just to download and then what to install the what the packages. You can go through the tools. You can see we have some GC um, packages that you need that are part of what the tools. All right. So press Y to enter. Then let your internet connection do the rest. This is going to take a little while depend, depending on your internet connection. Okay, so um, like I said, depending on your internet connection, it's going to take a little while to download all these packages and it's going to also take a little while to install those packages that has been downloaded. So for now, we can see everything got downloaded and make sure you have a stable network, a stable internet connection. Okay, if by or uh, if by chance in the middle of the downloading or installation your internet connection got lost just rerun the what the command okay just rerun this command again this two chain command again just it will continue from where it stopped where the internet connection got what interrupted okay for now we are not done we are almost done so the final thing we need to do we need to add what the binary file the binary folder to what to our windows part to our windows or my environment part so i need to do is to go to your open just click on your start menu and then go to your settings 
Okay, I think I actually access my settings from here. Okay, sorry about that. So, okay, just click on settings. Okay, once you open your Windows setting, just search for what edit environment. Even before you finish typing it, you have seen it here. Edit environment variables for your account. Okay. So under you will see two different variables. There's user variables and there was system variables. You don't need to you don't want to tamper with the system. You can't even do anything on the words on the system variables. It's not editable, it's not you cannot add, you cannot edit. Okay. So on the user variables, click on parts. After clicking on part, then click on edit. Okay. Now we want to add a new word, a new part. That's the part to this word, to this tool that we just downloaded. So click on part. Just click on new then add i'm going to drop the this on the what on the description below uh okay msys64 because that's the version that we downloaded we downloaded depending on the version so just make sure what you copy and paste this from the what from the book this uh, from the description box below okay so after you're done with this just click on what's okay for it to what to add this new part. This is the part to what to the tool to our what GDC compiler that we want to be downloaded for this was for this system. Okay, so I just need to do is to click on OK, then click on OK. Okay, now you need to go back to your git bash. Uh, okay, I think I mistakenly closed it the other time. Just open up your git bash back and then run the GDC dash dash version again just to be sure that what. The GCC compiler was what was installed, was downloaded and installed successfully in your system. So you will get this from saying gcc.exit is not the same form that you were getting before that was that GCC command not found. Now you what that's what be successfully was installed. In case you run it after doing all the after following through the what the installation process and it's run the what the GCC dash version and it's still showing that what the GCC compiler on um, the GCC command not found, just close your git bash and open it again just to what to to make sure that it is able to access your what's your Windows your operating system for what for this what for this GCC compiler. Now that we have it installed, now we are ready to what to do a little test run to actually know whether what GCC compiler we actually will compile our what's our C program and then give us our what required output. So real quick, I'm just going to what to use the peer editor to create a little file. Let me just say sample.c. So I'm just going to write a simple C program. I'm not going to say too much. You don't need to worry about. I'm not yet to talk about what all this is doing. So include std h. I'm just going to add its name word. So this is just a simple C program to what to print what hello world to our what our standard output. So I'm just going to use print f uh hello okay let's just do something hello code tribe okay that's the name of our community so hello code tribe so if this box if uh, if the GIS compiler was actually installed successfully, this should be able to compile, and then you should be able to see what L word or L code drive on your what's on the standard output. So I'm just going to save this file. So now, how do you compile? All you just need to do is to just press GC, which is the name of the compiler that we want to use to compile this your what's your C program. Then followed by the name of the file. Okay. By default, if you don't specify where this where to send the output, so is going to create an error, a default executable file for you called a.exd on Windows since I'm working on the Windows environment. So if I'm working on the Linux environment, it's going to create a what? A, okay, let's just experiment that. So after this, let me list out the content of my directory. I have a lot of content. You can see the what the a.exd here. This is the executable file where the what where the result of what of compiling what this program was what was sent. So now how do you this is how you execute a file that is what executable just dot slash then followed by what the name of that what of that file. If I should do this, I have what hello code tribe. Oh, I forgot to add a new like character. That's why it's the behavior is like this. So let me go back to the file and just check something a little, a little quick. 
um, okay just to make sure that this thing printed on the green line so i'm just going to compile the word the file again and i'm going to run the word the executable again a.exe so we have what a local tribe so now our what our gc compiler is working successfully thank you very much for staying to the end of this video don't forget to like click on the like button click on the subscribe to our channel then also make sure to share this video to others we have other videos on our youtube channel don't forget to check on those videos they might be really helpful to you and um, thank you once again my name is abiyono this is code tribe community have a nice day bye